<laughs> Should I lead this one? Yeah, go on. Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV. I'm Chris Page. I agreed. I know, I was just playing. I like to make things awkward with uh, everybody. Yeah, you did that the other day, actually. I did. I did well. You did, yeah. It was good. Yeah, it's hard to follow that up. Should we um, not talk about that and talk about the Reds News? Yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about the Reds News then. I'm Chris Pajak, this is Ross Shanley, and this is your daily dose of Red Men TV Daily News. Uh, we'll start with the squiggle himself, Paul Joyce, on Twitter. Brighton were among a number of clubs interested in Marco Gruwich, but acted too late. He will rejoin Hertha Berlin on loan with Liverpool to receive £2 million loan fee. Jurgen Klopp is counting on the player for the 2021 season. This is quite interesting, actually, isn't it? Uh, so, again, we're now at the guard and they're saying, reiterating the same thing, Gruitch to rejoin Hertha Berlin, but Klopp insists he is in Liverpool's plan, so he's going on loan again, um, and this time he's going back to a club that he's already been at. Now, he had a, a decent little return last season, I think it was about five goals in 23 appearances, they had a changing manager as well, Ross. Um, for all we've heard over the last couple of years about Gruitch is that Klopp really likes him, yet all we see him is going out on loan. <laughs> yeah. Strange, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's part of his de development of growth, to be honest. If you think you look at the Liverpool squad, as you and Paul did last week, you know, you look at that and think, where's he going to get his game time? Again, he's, he's developing. He did well at, at Berlin last year. If he's happy with it and the club are happy with it, then it seems you know a deal that suits everyone. He can, he can go there, he can grow. He doesn't have to adapt to anything, a different culture or anything, because he's already used to it. You know, his teammates, they're happy with him. Just go and, go and do it. And it seems, a couple of people said this on Twitter, actually, that, you know, maybe next year that's where Milner well, Mil Mil goes. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it frees up a spot, and you've got a player there ready to kind of come in and settle. And he's he's got he's got um, first team game time under his belt. I like the fact that Grew just come out and said that he wanted to go back to Hertha Berlin because it suits his style of football as well. And I think that's important, isn't it? And you know, the question marks for me around Marco Grew are whether he suits Liverpool's style of play. Uh, maybe at the moment, from what we've seen in, in the very few sort of pre-season friendly games, you know, he can be an effective footballer, but does he really suit Liverpool's style of play? Um, Jürgen Klopp clearly likes him. He signed a new contract. It was a five-year deal before the start of last season. Uh, so he'll be going into his second year of a five-year deal. Um, there are also some bonuses related to his loan this time around and maybe some penalties if he misses game time and stuff like that, which is quite interesting. Again, Liverpool making sure that the players out on loan do actually get to figure in those teams. And, it looks like Gruitch will figure for Hertha Berlin uh, next season. Uh, the, the Milner stuff's quite interesting, isn't it? The likelihood that he probably goes at the end of this year. And therefore, as you say, a spot freed up for Gruitch to come back in. I'm going to ask you now, though, before we before we talk on, on to the next couple of subjects and stuff, do you really think that Marco Gruitch will be a first-teamer for Liverpool? Um, I think it's difficult to judge. I don't, maybe not first team. But I think he'd be in and around the squad. I think you know you could probably add a line to that. Might probably go at the end towards the next season. So there's another spot there. Just depends on the development of the players. You know he's not getting ahead of Fabinho, Henderson, Van Alden, Cater probably hopefully towards that stage. But again, I don't know what like you said where he where he fits in. It's all well and good scoring screamers against Barcelona and Tramir, you know, at pre season. But then you know it's time for him to develop. I was probably like that with Origi. I'm going. I don't know where he fits in. And in the past three four months he's just gone. Pfft. So this is my role. I've got I've got a place here, and I think Klopp will have more time for him as well, because um, everyone else is kind of settled in. Yeah, well, listen, uh, before we move on to the next story, uh, we are launching Red Men News uh, on the 8th of July. So next Monday, uh, we'll be producing these shows for the Red Men News channel. Uh, the link is in the description. It'll be pinned comments as well. It'll, we'll throw it into the chat. Get over there. We want 10,000 subscribers when our first video goes live, please. So help us out. If you like these daily news show, they will be continuing uh, on the new channel. So go and check that one out. Uh, we'll go, uh, we'll take a little jet over to the African Cup of Nations now where Naby Keita reportedly has returned to Liverpool for further examination of a thigh injury. Ross, uh, tell us a little bit about this one, mate. Um, well, to be honest, it seems a bit of a mess, to be honest. So, he obviously was injured a few months back. Missed, I think it was the Barcelona games, yeah. wasn't it? The sec second leg he missed, and obviously the final. Um, Liverpool said you know, he was injured, he wasn't ready. They took him anyway, they took a gamble on him. He came on and made a substitute appearance, although he wasn't completely fit already. And then I think he started the next game and it's just been a bit of a mess. Obviously, he's one of their better players. They want to use him. I think there was reports at the weekend that he kind of said he wasn't ready, wasn't comfortable with it all. But they played him anyway because, you know, they're obviously desperate to, to do well in the competition. So this report saying, you know, he's returned. He's having a look at his injury. He probably should have been left alone um, to let, let it heal rather than, you know, make the injury even worse than it has done. And it's, it resulted in him coming back, which if that 
delays his start at the beginning of the season, I think. You know, a little bit gut, and apparently he's coming back for three days, and then he'll be heading straight back out. So, Guinea played uh, against Burundi, um, and they won 2 0 without him. Uh, obviously, it's a thigh and a shin injury. Uh, so, apparently, the Liverpool doctors have been in contact with him. He's coming back. We're going to have a little look at him, see what type of a state he's in physically. Uh, but apparently, he will rejoin up with the Guinea squad. Uh, it'd be interesting to see where this one goes. So I think you're right, Ross. I think it's really important. Um, that we know that he's going to be good to go when we get to that pre-season tour and obviously we're going to have a, a busy, busy season this year with, with so many games in, in so many different competitions that Naby Keita was just starting to hit form at the end of last season before his injury and uh, he'll be an important player for us this season. We want him to hit the ground running as well because he had a difficult season as well, didn't he? So, and Klopp always talks about that, that pre-season is really where your fitness is built up for the entire nine-month-long season. So it's important that we get him in for that pre-season, that he's not doing it on his own and that when the season starts, He's a part of the side. We don't want him to have another slow start like he did last season. Um, so it'll be diff difficult for Naby, I think, at the moment. Um, it's hard to judge, isn't it? Because at one side, having game time's quite good. But not, not if you're injured or like, you just got to hinder his start towards the, the beginning of the season. And it's also hard to judge because I look, I'm not saying it might be the same as you, like international football, just going, I'd just say he's injured. Just leave him out, but you know they obviously want him, and he might feel the same. Going actually, it's me, it's me country. I want, I want to play for him. You know, quite, quite proud. Whereas, I think I've well. One of the things that asked, one of the things that no one really thinks about is is how you how you get these players fit for these type of tournaments. So I mentioned it then. Pre season is about making sure that a player is fit for a nine month long season. Mm -hmm. Now I know from following cycling. Um, that it's very very difficult to to get someone to peak for a three week tour, for example. Um, in, in like the Tour de France or something like that. Now, one of the things with an international tournament is you want them to peak during that yeah. tournament. The international teams aren't asked whether they bomb after the tournament, quite honestly. They want them to make sure that they're the absolute best for a couple of weeks in the summer. So their fitness that they've been going through is all about getting them ready for a couple of weeks. Liverpool's job is to make sure they get ready for nine months, and that's what they're screwing up mm. with the the way that their fitness coaches are working them during an international tournament. And nobody really talks about this, but it's sports science. This is what it's there for. This is what uh, we have to deal with. And Liverpool will need to make sure that they get him back in time to build him up for nine months. Because quite honestly, Guinea don't care whether he's going to be fifth for Liverpool for the next nine months. They want to win this competition. Uh, so we'll move on. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Um, Bogdan's left Liverpool. This is the first time I've clicked on this story. Apparently he sent a heartfelt message to Liverpool fans. Oh, go ahead. Should we have a look at this one? Four years ago, I signed for Liverpool FC. Now it's time to say goodbye. I want to say thank you for the people who supported me, gave me the chance to play for this new club and who helped me get through hard times. I always feel privileged that I belong to Liverpool FC, trained and played with such fantastic players. I'm sure the club will be successful for a long time coming because the people working for them are simply amazing. I would like to wish you the very best for the future. Well, that is quite nice, actually. I was literally just going to go Bogdan's left next story, but that heartfelt message is... It's really pulled on the old heartstrings. Has it? No. Next. Uh, Premier League I mean, fans like clubs cornering. transfer window boost as they scrap inhibiting financial fair play rule that force clubs to keep wage bill increases under £7 million a year. This is something that I wasn't... I didn't know about this short-term cost control. Nope. So apparently if you give someone a, a big wage increase, a part of that had to come out of a new commercial deal. You couldn't use funds that you already have. So for example, let's just use dead simple so, um, numbers and stuff. Liverpool want to give Bobby Firmino a, a, a huge pay increase. Money would have to come from a new commercial deal. They couldn't just use the money that they've got sat in the bank. So that's where they all came from, I think. You know, having sponsors on the shirt sleeve and then they have like a... A beer sponsor, a betting sponsor, an airline sponsor, and all that stuff. I think that's that's how that's where a lot started. I've got need some more revenue for a start, but I think it was partly to do with this. They've missed the trick here because they could have just gone the new transfer sponsor, and I think that would probably get them <laughs> much more money because you'd be like, oh yes, get in, Mastercard. Thanks yeah. for buying Bobby for me, you know, for us. That would be great. You should have just gone with new transfer sponsor, lads. What have you been playing yeah. around with? You know what I mean? And our new Qatari sponsor <laughs> from, <laughs> from BSG. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's what they do in Mexico when they have like mad 
just sponsors all over the shirt. The shirt's a sponsor shirt. I so just fund it all through. Yeah, just, just yeah. sell a little bit of space. Did you ever hear yeah. about the guy who created the website when he was like 17 years old and he created it with a million pixels yeah. and sold a pixel for a pound each and became a millionaire by selling it out? And he was a 17 year old web developer and just sold a million pixels for a pound each. That's great. That's what Liverpool should have done. Anyway, uh, we'll move on. Liverpool's Trent Alexander Arnold ranked alongside Kylian Mbappe and Jaden Sancho as one of the world's most valuable youngsters. He actually wasn't ranked alongside them, he was ranked below them. In because third. he came third. Um, I don't know where... <laughs> it's, a, it's a misleading headline, shall we say. Yeah. Uh, but he is apparently the most valuable, third most valuable under-21-year-old in world football. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? And I can't argue with the fact that Mbappe and Sancho are probably more valuable. They're forward players. He's a defender. He's now their youngest... Uh, sorry, he's the most expensively ranked... Um, Defender in world football. So should be as well. His quality. Uh, it did my thing. Yeah, I think it's only. I think it's him, Don Rummer, one other person. It's not an attacker, basically. You know that kind of says. Oh, it was the other one. Yeah. You know, <coughs> I think that's where you kind of come from, like goals and assists. Obviously, count towards um, you know your value or a bit of flair or whatever. But you know the, the contribution, the assist, the amount that he grew last season, his offensive work, which arguably still needs a little bit of work. But he came against up against some of the best players in the world last season and still handled it pretty well for someone who was 19 going to the 20s. Is incredible? And he's only one of those top three players who played in two Champions League finals and won one. Uh, Alex... Uh, Alison Becker and Alex Oxley chamberlain have, have taken up new squad numbers. Uh, I'm sure everybody will have seen Oxley chamberlain announcing it on his Instagram story. He has taken over Daniel Sturridge's recently vacated number 15 shirt and Alison Becker has taken over Luis Carius's number one shirt uh, who's staying at Besiktas. Um, that's kind of that, um, unless you think it's a big deal and we should talk about it. Okay, I just thought I'd throw it in there because it was news. It is news. It is news, yeah. It's not exciting news, it's but it's news. news. Um, <laughs> talk about not transfer news. Liverpool are considering buying Philip Coutinho back from Barcelona. Yeah, we're not. I just can't see this happening. It's just, I mean, I don't even want to talk about it, to be honest, because I just, I feel like people in the comments will be like, oh, you know, you said Phil Coutinho was coming back. I do not think Phil Coutinho is coming back to Liverpool. I do not think that Liverpool are considering buying Felipe Coutinho back from Barcelona. Um, I think those, but that bridge is well and truly been burnt right now. Yeah, and another thing, Klopp doesn't like going back to his old players. It's kind of his thing. I think when he first came to Liverpool, or in the early days, he was linked with the Aubameyang and all the players that he played with at Dortmund. He's like, I'm not interested. And for someone like you said, Bernie's Bridges and the way that he left, I think, you know, that's that's his that's him done now, isn't it? I think so. I mean, I can't imagine him going. Listen, he might go to a PSG, something like that. Um, but really, I can't imagine that he'd be coming back to Liverpool Football Club. I don't. I'm not sure the squad would want him back. Although, would good you, players, would you, would you players. want him back? Would I? Yeah. I wouldn't mind having someone of his quality come back into the side and stuff, but I'll be perfectly honest with you, I just can't see it happen, so there's no point in talking about it, it just no. doesn't seem likely. Uh, Tom, give us a comment, mate, while I finally found them on the computer. <laughs> um, kicking it off with a blue super chat by Thomas Shaw, just simply says, rest in peace, Bailey. He's not dead, he's just gone. He's dead um, to us. He's dead to us, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Fraser Young says, I like Gruwich, but he won't get any playtime with us, so might as well go back on loan. Plus, the loan fees are probably covering his full fee. Oh, mate. Yeah, what the, f- what the fee that we paid for him. For Gruwich? Yeah. Well, probably the amount of times he's been out on loan. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's all good stuff, isn't it? Again, from Liverpool, you know, making sure that we get paid for these loans and stuff. And I, I agree with you. I can't see that they'll really get back into the side. I've, I've, I've read an interesting one there from Tyler Tate. There's no doubt Coutinho's quality, but he had his chance. That kind of sums it up, doesn't it? And Owen Glinda says Coutinho doesn't suit our squad. That's interesting, because I, I think mean, he kind of did. Attitude, maybe. And right. togetherness, I yeah. think that's probably getting If that's right. how you mean it, then you're probably right, aren't you? Um, would have him for like 30 mil max again, says Owen. I, I can't imagine the Barcelona would sell him for 30 million, can you? Oh, pull the pants right down, couldn't we? We did that. Absolutely. Jojo just says thanks for 142 million, Phil. Um, Hyla Matthias says, where are the assists coming from next season? And I wonder if this is more... Uh, can you explain this one, please, Hella? Um, is this, do you mean we need an, uh, an attacking creative midfielder? Because I think the assists kind of came from the full-back slots a lot of the time last season, and I expect that that would continue to be the case. I think it will be the same. I think you've got to look at Jordan Henson's role towards the end of the season as well. Part of the reason why he kind of flourished or you know, fans turned towards him again was because he was in a more advanced role. He was getting assists, he was getting in the mix, he was, he was scoring goals. Or, you know, I think people kind of forget 
because it doesn't go up in the stats, the assist to the assist. And because we play kind of short, short passes, you kind of miss that that little bit of play out. I think it's because there's loads there. Chamberlain's coming back as well. Lalana, whatever you think of him, I think he may have a role to play within the side. I don't think he's going to be much, but I think you know if he works towards his fitness, I think he's the answer everyone wanted. He's not Coutinho, he's not Fakir, whatever. But you know you can just chuck him in every now and then. Mm -hmm. You know come, come from there as well. The front three always get a fucking loads of assists as well. Which sounds. Uh, Devon Cook says Grealish should have gone to Brighton and proved himself in the Premier League. That's an interesting take, actually. Uh, it is, but he's still getting game time, isn't he? He's still developing. He's still, but he's probably building confidence, which is the main thing that he could go to Brighton and play one in three games. Maybe that's why he didn't go. And Liverpool going actually, you know, go and get some game to game time under your belt, learn. And he's he's happy there. But if, yeah. if let's say he does, let's say he went to a Premier League side, it'd probably be easier for us to keep tabs on him first and foremost. Maybe a little bit easier for the club as well. Probably, but I think if you look at it from a business point of view, if he goes to Brighton and he does crap, then his value declines. Where he goes to Berlin and he's how we don't want him. He's probably had a good season and we can just sell him for more. Interesting. I mean, I, the, the the same could happen, I suppose. At, uh, at Brighton, it's a bigger at, risk, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. it probably is. At him having known the club and stuff like that, so. Um, uh, Tyler Tatis, people who are asking for an attacking midfielder has forgotten how good Ox was for us. Um, I agree with that. Uh, Elijah, thank you for the blue super chat. Do Liverpool need to spend big to win the Prem title? My my instant reaction to that is no, we don't need to spend big. We need to spend smart. We need to buy the right players for this club. We need to buy the right players to, to help get better. Um, but I do think Liverpool will be better anyway for another season. I think that, uh, People forget we had the best defence in the league last season. It's the first time our back five played together. Last season was the first time we had that back five playing together, you know what I mean? And even then, you could argue that we actually didn't have our best back five playing for most of the season because Joe, Joe Gomez went down. Yeah. Um, and then you look at the midfield, well, Fabinho's only had one season and he only really got great towards the back end of the season, the second half of the season anyway. We've got Ox coming back into the side who, I'm sorry to say, is going to be like a new signing nice. again. Um but he is. Navi Kite is going to be going to be better in there as so well. So I think Liverpool will improve. Yeah, I think I think you got James Milner. I reckon will cover left back quite when he needs to as well. I think that's kind of sorted. I think people kind of forget how how good players can improve that are already at the club as well. I said this a few times. Derek Ray is one of them. Joe Matip's another. Are people are I kind of thought we're done at the club and, and they can improve. You know this togetherness that we do, we touched on earlier. There, mm -hmm. that's going to benefit them going into this new season. And you know, Navi Kite, Chamberlain, potentially Lallana. A, 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 embedding in the squad and getting better and being options when we've not had them before it sounds it's getting 97 points into win the Champions League you don't necessarily need to go big to, to improve I get that's what City are doing I get that's what other teams are doing I get that's what people want and that's what you do on FIFA but he, you know Klopp knows what he's doing he, does. he absolutely does so there you go if you want more on all of this that we've talked about today uh, we'll be doing a Reds uh, news roundup on the website uh, probably be about 30 to 45 minutes long looking at most of the story site and a few other little bits and pieces from around the club and the news and stuff um, so do go over and check that one out that will be going out later on this afternoon early evening um, so if you want more Red Men TV first month is free on the RedmenTV.com and it's just £5 a month thereafter uh, we'll be covering, of course, all of the pre-season games and Liverpool throughout the entire season. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for commenting. And we'll see you next time. Ta-da. <laughs>